Thank you so much for that wonderful and very meaningful, uplifting message of the song. Thank you so much. Simply by reading the title, everyone can already take some conclusions. Abana, Farpar, and Jordan. Naaman asked this question. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? Why should I come to this Jordan River? All the way from my country. I have better rivers there in Damascus. He was comparing rivers. Abana and Farpar with mountain streams, fresh, clear, and have beautiful scenery. Compared to Jordan that is muddy and discolored. But even if Jordan River was as beautiful as Abana and Farpar, why should he go there in the first place? Some young people, parents, are also comparing schools. To the question, couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? Is asked also another question. Couldn't I just study there and be successful? Why should I come here? What is so unique about Jordan that I should go there? What is so unique about Adventist schools that I should study there? I have a very dynamic church with good small group programs, Sabbath school, worship, Adventist youth, mission trips, adventurer, pet finders, master guide, week of prayer, Bible study, and choir. Can I have, can I just have this very dynamic church and I don't need to come to AUP and I will just study in public schools? We have tried to ask these important or major questions. But let us review one more time from the perspective of the question of Naaman. Do we still need Adventist schools? In order to answer this question, let us ask three questions about Naaman. Number one, what brought Naaman to Jordan River? Number two, what did Naaman find in Jordan River. Number three, what changes he experienced at Jordan River? To question number one, what brought Naaman to Jordan River? Second Kings chapter five, verse three, recorded a very wonderful testimony of a little girl who spoke to the wife of Naaman, if only the master would go and see a prophet in my country, a prophet in Samaria, I believe he would be healed. So what brought Naaman to Jordan River? Because God's prophet is there. God's teachers are there. We already seen a proof from the Bible that prophets are considered teachers in the biblical times. So what brought Naaman to Jordan? The emphasis is not on the Jordan River, but the emphasis is on the prophet. The girl did not have any idea that prophet Elisha would send Naaman to Jordan River. She simply said, if only our master would go and see the prophet there. The emphasis is not much on the facilities, but on the teachers. What kind of teacher 
Elisha was or is. Number one, he is a teacher with wide spectrum of influence. Even a little girl knows very well about the influence of this teacher of God, Elisha. The next one, he is a teacher in whom people have confidence to find hope. What if when Naaman would go to Jordan or to go to Samaria to meet Elisha and he returned worse and not healed? But this little girl has confidence on this teacher that this teacher will bring hope. Many of our Adventist institutions become the last hope for many parents. Eliza is a teacher who has a great sense of calling. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his attendant. Goodbye, my previous occupation. I am going to be a teacher. Eliza is a teacher who belongs. <laughs> this is another English problem. But at least I realize it. Eliza is a teacher who belongs to the faithful remnant. When you look at your Bible, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 18 and 19, God said to Elijah, Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Sarfat. Meaning, Elisha was one of the 7,000 remnant. He is a teacher that belongs to the faithful remnant. Elisha is a teacher who understands the context of the great controversy. Before his calling, that is described in 1 Kings chapter 19, just the previous chapter, chapter 18, we have this contest of faith on the Mount Carmel. A great controversy. And Elisha was aware about this context of the great controversy. And Elijah, his mentor, came up victorious. Elisha is a teacher who is faithful and committed to the calling. Three times at least, he said to Elijah, I will not leave you. How many times have you thought of leaving AUP? He is a teacher who believes in what he is doing. When the other prophets disturbed him or his conscience, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you, from over you today? He said, I know, keep silent. He knows what he's doing. He believes in what he's doing. He is a teacher who has seen and experienced God's power. He witnessed Elijah taking his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Upon returning after Elijah was taken up, he, Elisha, struck the water. It divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. First, he witnessed the power of God. And second, he himself experienced the power of God. Elisha is a teacher who is spirit 
field. He said, Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. He is a teacher who went under a very proper training. He might not realize it that plowing with 12 yoke of oxen was actually a very good training that he underwent, preparing him for being a prophet. So we have answered the first question. What brought Naaman to Jordan River? Second question. What did Naaman find at Jordan River? He found that there was an emphasis on faith. He was a little bit angry actually when Elisha just sent his servant Gehazi to tell these words to him that he need to go and dip himself seven times in Jordan River. Second Kings 5 verses 11 to 13. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. He was asking something very, very common to him like this. A very common method. But what did he find? He found unique methodology. He found unusual approach. He found unfamiliar treatment. What did he find in Jordan River? He found that there was a mission-oriented ministry. And we know that the result of his visit to Samaria was not only his healing, but also his conversion. That he said, now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Let's come to question number three. What changes did Naaman experience at Jordan River? You will read your Bible and you will find in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 13, his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. He experienced physical rejuvenation. What changes did he experience? Verse 15, now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Intellectual change. Now I know. Before, I did not know. After I come here, now I know. What changes did he experience at Jordan River? 2 Kings 5, verse 17. For your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other God but to the Lord. Spiritual renewal. What else changes that he experienced in Jordan River? After his healing, he said before he, ba he bade goodbye or farewell, he said to Elisha, 2 Kings 5 verse 18, but may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimon to bow down, and he is leaning on my arm, and I have to bow there also, when I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may God, Lord, forgive your servant for this. He was not intending to bow down, but since the king would really lead on him. When the king bowed down, there is no way he would also bow down because of the king. 
but he would not worship. There is a social responsibility. What change did he experience in Jordan River? Character change. Verse 11 of 2 Kings chapter 5 says, Naaman, <laughs> this is a spelling but not the English spelling on the name. It should be Naaman, not Namaan. Naaman went away angry. That is in verse 11. But in verse 19, Eliza told him, go in peace. After experiencing Adventist education for some time at AUP, many students would experience character change. He said, I thought that he would surely come out to me. He should come out to me. But then later, Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God. First, he was very self-centered. But then, he experienced chains of character. He became God-centered and others-oriented. True education means more than pursual of a certain course of study. It means more than a preparation for the life that now is. It has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of the existence possible to man. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, the spiritual powers. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. And that was experienced by Naaman. I don't want to repeat this. I just split the paragraph into some sentence to help the students to score a good grade in their quiz. So what brought Naaman to Jordan River? God-fearing teachers. What did Naaman find in Jordan River? Faith-integrated curriculum. What did Naaman get from the Jordan River? Whole person conversion. Last night, we learned together that we are offering Adventist education at the end time. To add to these three answers to the question, why we still need Adventist education, we have answered because Jesus is coming soon. The question that Jesus would ask when he comes is written in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Can we be, can we be partakers of the effort that many students will have faith in Jesus Christ? My fellow teachers, staff, administrators, in one of your discussion, I saw that one question was, is there any Bible example aside from Jesus that we can learn to be a good and dedicated teacher? I would like to say one of them, there are many perhaps, would be Eliza. He said, I will not leave you. Can we have the same commitment? He said, yes, I know. Keep silent. I will not be disturbed by those little things. I know what I'm doing. I'm focused. He said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Could this be also our commitment to always invite the Holy Spirit to empower us and to abide in our hearts? He said, I will go. Now we are in the I will go conquenium. And he said, I will go in response to the invitation of the students. Because the students said to him, Sir, 
our dormitory is already very small. Would you allow us to go to the forest to cut some trees so that we can build a better and a more uh, a bigger dormitory? He said, okay, you can go. And then the student said, sir, could you please come with us? He said, I will go. And when they, when they were cutting woods, trees, one student faced a problem because the axe head fell into the unknown place or spot in the river. But he helped the student to solve the problem. He asked, where did it fall? He is a teacher who said, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. He encouraged his student, don't worry. God is with you. He who is with you is most powerful. He said to his student, actually he prayed to the Lord. Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Have we ever prayed for our students who still cannot see the equation of a math problem? Have you ever prayed to the students or for the students who experience delay in finishing his thesis or dissertation? Have you ever prayed for the student who still do not understand the context of the education? He prayed to the Lord, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. I want to be like Jesus Christ. I want to be also following the examples of Eliza. At this commitment service, the invitation is very simple. There are many Bible characters that we can follow their examples. Jesus Christ is beyond comparison. He is the top. But one of other biblical characters, Eliza, is there any one of you who would like to make a commitment or to renew your commitment to continue serving the Lord as a dedicated servant of God through any responsibilities entrusted to us, be it a professor, be it an administrator, be it a staff member, or whatever assignments given to us? If that is your desire, I would like to invite you to express it by standing and we are going to have a prayer. Father in heaven, we are standing before you not because we are going to close the program very soon but we are standing here expressing our commitment and recommitment that we would like to serve you. Thank you so much for having entrusted to us this sacred responsibility, being teachers in the context of the great controversy. Father, we are lacking wisdom. We are limited. We do not know everything. In fact, those many years of our experience still cannot equip us to the point that we can do everything by ourselves. We just rely on you. We would like to depend on you because you are the source of power, the source of wisdom. Father, I pray that you will bestow your blessings to each individual, professor, staff, administrators of Adventist University of the Philippines. As they begin this new school year with many students that will come to their classes to visit them in their office, may you help your servants to be agents of hope and faith 
and you will use them to bring success to these students and will introduce salvation for them. I pray that you will help them in any challenges that they may be facing. Father, give them strength. Help them, Father, that they may endure. And at the end of the school year, everyone will rejoice, praising your name for what you will be doing for them. Thank you so much, Father. We just come to you and we surrender ourselves. We commit ourselves to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Master Teacher. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you.